Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So, whilst we wait for Season 6, it's a good opportunity to do a video I've always wanted to do about the MI240 Hind. I've been a little worried about this one because the Hind isn't always the most glamorous vehicle to watch, but it is one of the most important in the game. Not least of all, it's the mobile spawn point that gives you a magical door to all the objectives you need to capture. Always useful in the game where people are trying to shoot you, as well as packing a ton of firepower to boot. What's not to love about that? So the objective of this video is effectively twofold. The first is to try and sell a vision as to how the transports should be played. As ever, this is just my opinion, but certainly in the first part I want to do talking about how you should do an opener with a hind, math is on my side, so I'm pretty sure I'm right on this one. And in the second part, really just give some advice if you would hear it on situations which I've heard anecdotally and also witnessed through my gameplay that people seem to be struggling with. Maybe you'll find that useful. But yeah, the Hind is an absolute monster. As you can see, it can evaporate just about any vehicle in the air, particularly those new super buffed attack helicopters. Get above them from behind and they're dead. And there's also a lot more than you might think that you could do about spawn camping tanks and specifically rail guns. Uh, you're not as powerless as you think, even when you're on your own. The great thing about campers or backliners is they never look backwards. It's so easy to just land behind them and get a kill. And I'm also keen to open up a can of worms and ask what you think about this. Love it or hate it, the butt slam is an incredibly powerful move. And I personally think it's legit because it is not a suicide move. You are not wasting the vehicle. And if I don't have a gunner, why shouldn't I go in and help my team out? Keen to know what you think about it. Okay, so this is by far the most important thing I'm going to say in this video, so please do hear me out, even if you drop after this section. Simply put, the Hind, or indeed the Condor, has the potential to kill hundreds of the other team in the opening two, two and a half minutes, and here's how. Fly your team to the mid-located objectives. Don't go too far or you'll get shot down. And let your team jump out. I'm not communicating with any of these people. These are just people I'm playing with who know how to play the game. As you can see, they're hopping out to grab the objectives, which in addition to being 10 kills against the other team for every objective we capture, more importantly, we're capturing sectors. So whilst we played the mechanics and the objective, their pilot, as you can see, was just busy taking points for themselves. As a result of that, we've captured five sectors compared to their two, which is a net gain of plus 30 tickets for us. But the bigger problem that the other team have is that they are now absolutely hemorrhaging tickets because of the delta between the number of sectors that we control, and let's count them off, one, two, three, four, five, because we move quickly, versus the two which they control. So every moment that goes by now, that team is just going to be losing lives and we didn't even fire a shot. Go forward in time about one and a half minutes, the Condors come in again. You can see what was a 50 ticket lead initially has now turned into a near 200 ticket lead. And that's not because we went on some kind of genocidal rampage of the other team. It's because we control the sectors, and that is in no small part because of what you, as the helicopter pilot and the helicopter passengers, did early on. It's difficult to quantify exactly how many tickets did we delete from the other team, but it easily runs into the hundreds, particularly if you hold the points for longer. So look, I fully recognize there's no guarantee or way that you can control that your team is going to respond to the opportunity you set up for them, but you should at least give it a try, and at least in my experience, more often than not, people know what they're doing, and they will play off it. And also, of course, like you're going to see here in the top left-hand corner, sometimes the other team will actually run forward to challenge you, and it turns into a fight, which is great, because you're in the hind, and you're way more maneuverable than they are. I actually feel very bad for Condor pilots in these situations. There's not much you can do. Other times, attack choppers make a pass. Fight back if you've got some gunners. But the most annoying thing is a jet that rams you. Seriously, so many people try to ram me, crazy things have started happening. I'm just going to say I did that on purpose and look cool. But anyway, there it is. You've heard my case, I've made my plea to you. I know if you're the pilot, you can grab a quick buck just by flying to the first objective and capturing it, but really you're throwing so much away. Please do keep this in mind if you're going to pick hind. It makes such a profound difference on the round. Okay, so that brings us to the issue of back capping. Backcapping is when you travel deep into the opposition's half and try to steal from under their nose as an objective and or a sector which they control, usually in a cheeky, under-the-radar type way, whilst they're all fighting on the front line. Now the reason you want to do this, particularly in the mid-game, is because depending on the state of the board, you're either going to 1. Increase the degree of bleed that the team is experiencing by disrupting the sectors that they hold, or 2. If you're in a losing position, stop the bleed or reduce it for your team. 
Either way, you really want to be doing it, otherwise frankly you're going to lose. As you're seeing on this example, sometimes back capping can be hotly contested and the best you can do is drop off your team and then go around in a circle and keep making passes until you're ultimately successful or you get shot down. I would advise you, particularly if it's contested, don't hang around, just drop off your team and move away. If you try and hover over to get points, you're just going to get shot right in the face. So yeah, that's back capping and that's what you should be looking for. I'm aware that a lot of players don't like back capping, they view it as maybe unsporting conduct. But these are the mechanics of the game, particularly when you're playing Conquest or Conquest adjacent uh, game modes. And if you don't do it, your team's just going to bleed out and die. So for that reason, I really recommend you should be doing it if you're playing in the hind. Okay, we've talked enough about uh, game mechanics, let's do something a bit more fun. Now, providing your gunners are good, you should be able to melt just about anything in the air that the game puts in front of you. But a lot of the time, you're alone because no one's spawned in and you have to get creative. Providing you're not on low health, a good heavy butt slam can take out most vehicles or at least push them down. In addition to damaging them, it also keeps them below you so they can't get a shot. In this case, my gun has spawned in so there's no need for a second pass. And here's my record for the best butt slam. Now before people shout dishonor at me, let's just think for a second. Would any of these people spared me when they saw I didn't have any gunners? I just got there first. Anyway, no need to drag it out, but this is a trick you might want to do, particularly if you find yourself alone. If you've got gunners, I wouldn't do it. Let them do the work for you. So yeah, just remember, if you are going to slam someone, don't go in too heavy, yeah? you got to stay in control. Remember, you're not trying to kill yourself. And there's a world of difference between this, a somewhat skillful maneuver when you don't have a gunner to take out an opponent attacking your team, and this, which is straight up giving up because you don't have the skill. What a time to miss the missile. <laughs> anyway, so as hopefully we've established by now, a good gunner and a pilot can take out anything in the sky. That doesn't mean, however, that every fight's going to go your way, and quite often you do take damage. So here's another trick that people don't seem to know from my observation, and that's about when to use the repair function. Now what I've observed is a lot of people use the repair function while they're actually being shot and taking damage and maybe people don't realize this but it actually disrupts it, it stops you being able to repair. So take a look. You can see we're getting pasted by the 30mm but I wait until the Apache breaks off, dives away from me and then I use the repair function so I don't get my repair interrupted and I can recover health mid-fight and come around on them. Timing it correctly to get the benefit can be the difference between winning the fight or not. So the last thing just to say here is a bit of advice about dodging missiles when you don't have a flare. And again, this is from the observation of being an engineer sitting in the back of the helicopter and getting blown out of the sky or repeatedly hit by missiles which could have been avoided. After you've flared, you've got 7 seconds until you can be targeted again. And if you can't get away, get low. Putting terrain or other types of obstacles between you and the trajectory of the missile stops you being hit, obviously. And as you get more familiar with maps, you'll see there's lots of natural places to hide. Stingers are absolutely everywhere since 5.3, so do take the time to learn the terrain and how to use it to your advantage. Easy with a little bit of practice, you'll get it. Okay, so this leads us to dealing with spawn campers. Now, if you're playing on your own or with someone who you trust and is happy to go along with it, as you saw in the intro, you can absolutely just land behind behind them, jump out, slap the C5 and wreck their day. Completely viable. But if you're playing with a bunch of people you don't know and may not appreciate it, the best thing to do when you see that flash in the sky from a railgun bolt, as you're seeing right there, is get low, fly right out the map and loop behind the tank. 
then sit right on top of their head like this. Now if you've got a 50 millimeter on board this will go a lot better because you can just blow it up directly but your crew on board can fire their rockets, use their AT mines, jump out and harass it and blow it up for you. And it's actually an extremely good way to counter the tour because there's nothing they can do about it. At best they've got a second gunner with a machine gun and that doesn't really hurt you. And just because I want to spread this message, let's take a quick look at me doing this with a Condor. Again, it's absolutely viable. Park above, let your team jump out, harass it, and kill it. In this case, you're going to see we actually managed to hijack the vehicle, which is superb. The only thing better than destroying a spawn camping tour is to steal it and turn it against their team. So I've actually started doing this quite a lot of my matches. I have to say it works quite well. Yeah, sure, sometimes you get caught out. But it's a really good way of dealing with, and also slightly annoying, spawn campers. So have a go with it. Just to be absolutely clear though, do not do this to a main battle tank unless you're certain there's only one person in there and you never know when another person's going to spawn in because they've got mortars, toes and other weapons that can fire vertically and you're asking for a kicking. In this case, everything worked out and we managed to hijack it. The person ran away, but you've been warned if you want to do it. It really only works on tours safely. So that section seems like a good segue into talking about the 50mm versus the 40mm and I'm not going to dwell on this because I'm pretty sure you know what these are by now. The 50mm is effectively for taking out heavy armor, can fire at long range and is very effective at what it does. If as the pilot, sitting on top of spawn campers or hunting vehicles is your preference, this is what you should have on your gunship. They can also take out infantry, but it's really one by one and it usually takes several shots to kill them, so it's not the most efficient and you'll rapidly run out of ammo. The alternative is the 40mm grenade launcher, which is absolutely beautiful at wiping out squads at short range very, very quickly. It's also good against air vehicles and most land-based vehicles, except for anything which has heavy armor like the Ram, the Mav, or the battle tanks. So buyer's choice really, pick whichever one works for you, but as the pilot, remember, you pick the gun, so just make sure you're giving your squad opportunities that match the gun that you picked. There's not a lot of point hovering over a main battle tank if you put a 40mm on and equally don't expect high body counts if you put the 50mm on in these situations. Just play accordingly. Okay, so this brings us to the final section of the video and something that I very personally believe. If you feel differently, all power to you, play the game how you want to play. I think the most important thing when you're playing the Hind or indeed the Condor is to understand that you are a bus, you are the mobile spawn point that also happens to have guns. By getting into the right position and showing a little bit of skill to dodge rockets, dodge incoming fire and get your team into position to be able to give some fire support where they can, you can drop theoretically a limitless number of soldiers, your teammates, onto an objective to capture it which as we discussed is extremely important for either breaking or securing a sector advantage and the impact that has on reinforcement tickets. Now there's no way to really disguise or hide the fact that this isn't the most glamorous job. You're not chasing someone down in the cockpit of a jet or burning the entire world with your Apache helicopter. But what you are doing with the people who are taking advantage of what you're offering is winning because a magical door that teleports you onto an objective that the other team's trying to defend that you don't have to walk through all the bullets to get to is actually a pretty powerful thing. Now obviously where you can, try to get yourself into positions where your crew are going to be able to shoot inside like above the skylight. You can pepper it with the explosive of your choice, get the miniguns firing. And also for that reason you want to stay as close to the objective as you can using the terrain to protect you from incoming missiles, protect you from line of sight, from tours or jets etc. Because if you're all the way up in the air your weapons will be ineffective and you'll probably get blown up in 2 seconds flat. Especially as you can only flare once every 19 seconds. So you won't be able to stay on point for very long. Unless the other team is completely ignoring you which is pretty unusual. But that's all I've got to say about that. Chasing down helicopters is fun, going off to spawn campers is entertaining but the way you actually win is by being a bus. Okay, I hope you found that enjoyable, possibly even useful, ideally both. And if you've made it all the way to the end, I'm going to leave you with a fun little fact. Maybe you didn't know this. So the question is, what happens if you run a massive back cap all the way to the enemy carrier and then capture the anti-aircraft gun? You time out and die. Have a great weekend, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.